Mine, 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 mine! No, 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 no! I don't need your help. I know what I'm doing. You want to do it that way, you go start your own league. And no, we're not doing a dang pinup calendar. We're doing it this way because I said so. Now, by all appearances, this may look and sound like a temper tantrum. <laughs> and let's be honest, it is. But I can assure you, it comes from a much deeper place. This comes from an intense vision and countless hours of damn hard work. It's also a symptom, a glaring symptom, of founder syndrome. <laughs> Now, while not an actual medical disorder, it is a real ailment to any organization that does not open up input to key stakeholders. And in the beginning, an organization does need a founder spirit. My heart was full of passionate ideas and dreams of what this organization of mine would look like. I foresaw the women of this community fiercely competing through the sport of roller derby. We were going to be modern day gladiators. This was something I knew had to exist. But something happens when an idea with passion is born. Inspiration. And inspiration by definition meant others started to share in my passion. I now had 40 women looking at me, wondering what's our team name gonna be? How many days a week are we gonna practice? And what colors are we gonna wear? I also started to hit walls of rejection. Walls for me that sounded like this. Hi, my name is Jennifer and I'm looking for a place to practice roller derby. Yes, it's a full contact sport. No, 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 it's nothing like pro wrestling. You're not interested. It's too much liability, but you have men's and boys hockey. Isn't that a full contact sport? Oh, you don't classify roller derby as a sport. <laughs> or let's talk about my first radio interview. Could you women accidentally fall on top of each other and rip each other's fishnets off? <laughs> no. <laughs> Are most of the women on your team lesbians? What? I have no idea, we do not ask that question. <laughs> if I had any doubt that I was passionate about this project, there was nothing like the inside of my guts boiling with frustration to solidify my goals. I was here to fight for an athletic organization that valued and respected women, not somebody's perverted version of it, not somebody's belief that what we were doing wasn't a sport, it was a sport, and I was determined to make sure everyone saw it that way. And my idea was getting traction, and I wasn't just being embraced by the skaters now, I was also being embraced by the community. And the question started to change. It was more like, where are your financial statements, and when's your first game gonna be, and why was I making all the decisions? Because when all this is going on, I can guarantee you I still felt 100% ownership of this project. I did not have the tools for this part of the journey and I was literally freaking out. And that's when a fateful meeting happened with two amazing men, Jerry Nutter, rest his soul, and John Fessler. These two men have taught me more lessons than I can digest into this one speech, but I am thrilled to tell you about our first meeting. We meet for my first official lunch. And I say that because nobody like me had to do lunch before. So I was really excited and I got a little bit of an ego boost from that. And I sit down with my list of well-prepared questions to all the things I was struggling to answer on my own. And as our lunch progressed, these two wise men bestow upon me my very first piece of knowledge. They say, look kiddo, you want this organization to be here 100 years from now? You gotta let it go. Your reach, it's only so far. You gotta give the community a sense of ownership. Only then will this grow and expand. 
Now, if somebody has just told you, you have to let go of your project in order for it to be successful, and inside your brain is dancing something like this, important this is? What if we're forced to wear logos on our asses and do jello wrestling fundraisers? And how do I make sure the women of this organization feel respected and feel as they should like athletes? If I don't control this, no! This is mine, mine, mine! No, no, no! Yeah, you, you might be dealing with founder syndrome. <laughs> now, I am at a crossroads here, and I can make two choices. I can hold on tight and suffocate my vision, or I could, as my newfound mentor suggested, and set it free. And I had a moment of clarity, that aha moment that I did not own this project. I was just its steward. And I started the process of letting go, except now I had to figure out how do I let it go and where do I fit into all this as I let it go? It's not like I woke up with some magic toolbox on how to function on a board of directors and working group dynamics, and I thought getting a practice space was hard. Try writing a set of bylaws and procedures that protect your core values. Not everybody has had this experience, but I had some very hard, humbling lessons because I was not always the most pretty or elegant about letting go. But there is something about going through this process, and I loved and still love this organization. There is something about playing a full contact sport that allows you to push through adversity. When somebody knocks the living daylights out of you and you're laying on the ground, yet you get up and keep going, it does make dealing with uncomfortable situations just a little bit easier. <laughs> you learn not to take things so personal. As the founder of a women's roller derby league, I have gotten to expand my toolbox through hard hits and working in group dynamics with rebellious, strong-minded, smart individuals. In my role now, it has many hats, but mostly it's to work within the system that has been built for it. And because of my willingness to let it go, I can proudly say that together, we, have sold out every home game since 2008. That through our concessions, we have donated over $50,000 back into this community. And that we're members of WIFTA, Women's Flat Track Derby Association. And that allows us to be ranked nationally with other amazing athletes. Not everybody can be the founder of a successful organization, but there's one way to be the founder of an unsuccessful one, and that is doing it on your own. Being successful, it takes more than a passionate idea. It takes humility, but most importantly, it takes the strength to let it go, because something else happens when you let it go. You will become inspired by other people's passion, and you will see it, what my mentors were trying to tell me and what I get to tell you today, and that's that others will carry it when you no longer can. So if I can leave you with wise words once bestowed upon me, it's let it go. It doesn't mean your organization doesn't need you anymore. It doesn't even mean there isn't a place for you. It just means if you're brave enough to acknowledge your organization has outgrown you, if you can be open-hearted enough to accept input from those that have been inspired, you will be privileged enough to witness your organization producing things that on your own you would have never had the vision to even imagine. Thank you.